Hi everyone, this is Kevin Eikhoff here. Today I'm going to teach you the five Tibetan rites. And there's a couple more of them beyond the five. I'm not going to talk about those. I'm just going to introduce you to the initial five. You know I come from a strong bhakti, devotional kind of energy. And so the thing is, is this first one, which is known as the spin, the twirl, I teach this, believe it or not, counterclockwise, not clockwise, like they say in the five Tibetans. And the reason is because I used to practice with a group of whirling dervishes and they go to counterclockwise versus clockwise. It's a different kind of energy. It helps to spin and cleanse. It still opens vortexes, but it gives you something a little bit different. And so the thing is, is each one of these things I'm teaching today, you're going to build up to doing 21 of these each. Each one, of, you'll, you'll spin 21 times. You'll do each one of these different postures and poses 21 times. The five Tibetans came from a colonel in the military in the British Army. He, from his travels throughout India and meeting some great spiritual beings and people, was taught these five Tibetan rites and basically he brought them to the world. It's an ancient, ancient tradition going back over 5,000, 10,000 years. Um, but it's, this can increase your health, your energy, restore vitality, and make a much better life. It's wonderful for people with chronic illnesses and that's why I show it, because it helped heal me. And I know lots of other yogic practices, but this is a great one for the asnases, and I'll show this to you, the first ones to spin. So, arms straight out, palms facing down, and like I said, we're gonna go counterclockwise. We're gonna begin with just, let's say, three of these, and we'll do each thing three times. But you're gonna to wanna to build this to 21 times. If you're finding yourself dizzy, you can bring your palms together like this. You can focus your two eyes on the tips of your fingers or the tips of your, your, your um, thumbs and just focus there until you feel yourself not really dizzy anymore. <clears throat> you wanna build this, like I said, to 21. And that's the spin. That's the spin part of the practice. <clears throat> You can breathe in, close your eyes when you're not feeling dizzy anymore, raise your hands up, and then just exhale and bring things down. Continue to focus on the third eye space and just feel the wonderful sensation in the body following that posture. It helps to reconnect you to the vortexes and your spin make you feel much better, much healthier in life. That's the first one. This next posture is known as the J. So you're gonna to wanna to come down to your mat, get into a seated position like this, and then basically just lie down. Once you lie down, you wanna have your hands sort of like widened like a web a little bit your thumbs may be right at the hip. And as you breathe in, you're going to raise up your chin towards your chest and you're going to bring your feet straight up. So here's how it goes. And then exhale, it comes down. Inhale, up, exhale, down. Inhale up, exhale down. Three of those, which I just did. Build that to 21. If you have a little trouble lifting your legs, you can do a modification where you come in and then lift up or just come in like that instead. So that's a modification. You can also put something under your hip to just raise it up if you have a lot of back problems and things. This can be stressful on the bottom of your back, so you want to protect that. 
So that's something to consider and do as a moderation. Um, and like I said, build, build this to 21. This is number three of the Tibetan rites. You're going to want to come into a seated position. This particular position where I'm sitting on my heels is very beneficial to the body. So um, it, just this posture alone, if you're sitting watching TV, if you're sitting doing something, wonderful posture to have to develop. Helps create a nice straight back and improves your posture and can make you feel better in general. Um, we do way too much sitting on chairs and things in our life. Anyway, this next posture, it's known as the arch, and it is similar to uh, the camel in that you go back, but you don't grab your heels. And so I am going to show you a modification here right off because I have trouble with my knees. And so I always take my mat and I roll the mat, and then I put it right under my knees. And so I have padding right off. You want to sit here. This whole posture, the main thing about this is you're, you're controlling a lot of the pressure on your back and your lower back here with your hands. So your palms on your buttocks and in here as you go back with your head and your back um, is very important to keep that. So as we inhale, we're going to breathe in and just let ourselves go back. And your palms drop down towards your knees. And as we exhale, we come up and just bring our chin to our chest. Inhale, come back. And you can, the more you push here on your buttocks, the more of a back bend you can get and this will help support you and protect you here. You can drop it down, but the support is here. And as you support that, you can drop down, and those who can can almost go back into the camel. That's two. And as we exhale, we bring our chin to our chest. Inhale. Come back. Let those palms drop. And then exhale, come back down. And then just come back down onto the back of your heels. That's the third posture. Our fourth posture is known as the tabletop. The tabletop, we're going to be sitting like this, feet with your toes up toward the ceiling, palms right by our hips with the fingertips down toward your feet. We're going to push up, and as we push up, you're going to land on the bottom of your feet. And here's how this looks. So you push up, and you basically form a tabletop here. And your arms and your hands stay in the same position your head is basically in a neutral, relaxed position here. And so this is one. You would come back. Back out. Exhale when you come back down. Inhale when you go up. And try to form the best table you can. And so 21 of those in time. Start with three to five a day. That's the tabletop. <clears throat> and this final one, this is known as the two dogs. And you start this one in a push-up position. So we're in a push-up position we're going to breathe in and go into a downward dog. Exhale and come into an upward facing dog. Inhale, downward facing dog. Exhale, upward facing dog. 
Inhale. Inward facing dog. Exhale. Upward facing dog. And then you can just come down and rest. Some like to go into child's pose after the final one, which again, it's that seated pose like this. Your forehead comes to the mat. Your palms are facing up and your hands are straight back. Your buttocks is slow, as close to your heels as possible while your head remains on the ground. And you can breathe and relax in child pose. It's a wonderful way to end the five Tibetan rites. I hope you appreciate the way I did it. I hope you gained something out of it. I can only tell you the five Tibetan rites have worked very well for me on a busy householder schedule. I knock them out. You can do the 21 really fast once you get these down. Knock them out and go about your day. It's helped me gain wonderful health benefits, healing benefits, and I hope it does the same for you. May you learn and practice the Tibetan rites with devotion because devotion in the end is the only thing that takes you across the ocean. I wish you well. Have a great day. Namaste. Jai Bhagwan.